Welcome to your digital classroom. Today, we are going to have the synopsis of the poem, Television. Before beginning, let's have a briefing about the poet. Roald Dahl is the poet. Roald Dahl is one of the most prolific of modern writers in English. He was a British novelist, short story writer, poet, screenwriter and fighter pilot. He is the author of famous children's books such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda and the BFG. The poem Television is taken from his collection Revolting Rhymes. Introduction Roald Dahl's Television is a poem that represents television as an idiot box and makes people aware of its ill effects on children's mental growth and imagination. The poem, on the other hand, focuses on the goodness of reading books. It is a stinging satire on television as he points out how television crushes the creativity and spontaneity of children. About the poem Television by Roald Dahl is a continuous 93 lines poem. There are no stanzas, but the poem definitely has different movements. The poet has taken care to use appropriate words to convey his message regarding disadvantages of watching television. The poem follows a rhythmic pattern and has a definite rhyme scheme. The poem can be seen as didactic because it intends to teach people about the negative impact television has on children. When the poet had written this poem, that is in the 90s, television was a real problem as it was a threat to the society. Now the mobile has taken its place. Now the problems that the mobile creates was the situation in the 90s what the television did. The strength of the poem is its tone. Roald Dahl keeps his audience in mind. Therefore, the tone of the poem is light, amusing and entertaining but not sermonizing. However, while talking about the negative impacts of television, he uses an angry and sarcastic tone. In contrast, he employs an easy, delightful and cheerful tone while talking about books. Now children, let's read and understand the poem. The most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set, or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. Here we come across some new words. Install means place or fix something in position. Ready for use. Idiotic thing refers to the television set here. The poet as the mouthpiece of a number of people begins by saying that the most important thing they have known regarding children is that they should never be allowed to watch television. Moreover, a better solution for the problem would be not to install a television set in their homes in the first place. In almost every house we have been, we have watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and launch about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week, in someone, someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. We come across some new words here. Gaping means watching with eyes wide open for a long time. Lol means to act in a lazy manner. Slop means to relax lazily and do nothing. Launch about means 
to sit or lie in a relaxed, idle way. Pop out means to come out. Eyeballs means ball of eye within the lids and socket. In these lines, the poet speaks as if he had undertaken a long research on the bad effects of watching television by visiting a large number of households in Britain. In almost every house, it was found that the children were lazing about all day and staring at the television screen without doing any productive work. The poet indulges in a bit of exaggeration that is amusing when he says that sometimes the children stare so hard that their eyeballs fall off and he had seen a dozen eyeballs rolling about on the floor in one house. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it, until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk Oh yes, we know, it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot? We come across some new words here. Hypnotized means Attract to, attracted to something or someone in a powerful or mysterious way. Ghastly means very shocking or horrible. Junk means low quality things that are of no use. Window sill means a ledge or bracket fixed at the bottom part of a window. In these lines, the poet says that the children get so hypnotized by watching television that all they do is sit and stare at the television. Their mind gets filled with the junk that is being telecasted on it. The only benefit that the television has is that it keeps the children occupied. The children don't fight and let their parents complete their whole their household course peacefully at the same time the poet questions the parents if they are aware of the bad effects television has on children it rots the sense in the head it kills imagination dead it clogs and clutters up the mind it makes a child so dull and blind he can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairyland. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think, he only sees. We come across some new words here. Rots means decays or deteriorates. Clogs means blocks. Clutters means covers or fills something with an untidy collection of things. Fantasy means activity of imagining things. These lines are written in capital letters to emphasize that watching too much television has negative impact on children. It not only clogs their mind, means blocks their mind and deteriorates their senses, but kills their imaginative and creative faculty. It makes them dull and restricts them from exp experiencing world's fantasies. The children only see because the television takes away their ability to think. All right, you'll cry. All right, you'll say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our darling children? Please explain. In these lines, the poet anticipates the parent's question, asking him that even if they took the set away, what type of entertainment they would give to their children to keep them occupied. 
We'll answer this by asking you, what used the darling ones to do? How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented? Here, we come across some new words. Contented means happy and at ease or satisfied. Monster here is the reference to the television. In these lines, the poet asks the parents to recall how children had kept themselves entertained before television was invented. Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott get soaks. One half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore. Books cluttered up the nursery floor. And in the bedroom by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Here we come across some new words. Proceed means to go ahead with whatever you were doing. Great Scott means expressing surprise or amazement. Gadsus is an exclamation of surprise. Galore means in large numbers or amounts. Cluttered means scattered. In these lines, the poet reminds the parents that before the invention of television, children would read and only read. Books could be found everywhere, be it on the nursery shelves, nursery floor, in the bedroom or by the children's bed. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens and whales and treasure isles and distant shows where smugglers rode with muffled doors and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants. Here we come across some new words. Wondrous means wonderful. Gypsies means they are members of a nomadic community who migrated originally from India and later settled in various parts of Europe, Asia and North America. Isles means a small island. Muffled means muted or silent. Oars means a long pole with a broad blade at one end used for propelling or steering a boat. Here, the poet gives a short list of books children used to read before. They used to read the books which were filled with tales of treasure islands, dragons, gypsies, queens, whales, voyages, smugglers, pirates, sailing ships, elephants, and so on, and cannibals crouching round the pot, stirring away at something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? Good gracious, it's Penelope. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter with Mr. Toad, the dirty rotter, and Squirrel Nutkin, Pigling Bland, and Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, and just how the camel got his hum, and how the monkey lost his rum, and Mr. Toad, and bless my soul, there's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole. Here, we come across some new words and concepts. Hum means a rounded lump found on the back of a camel or other animals. Cannibals means once that eats the flesh, one that eats the flesh of its own kind. Rump is the back end of an animal or tail. Good gracious is an exclamation of surprise, dismay or alarm. Penelope is the faithful wife of a great Greek hero, Odysseus. Here, Actually, it's the name of a dish named after Penelope. So, the poet refers to 
typical stories that the children read in his days. Beatrix Potter is an English writer, illustrator, natural scientist and conservationist best known for her children's books. Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham is a very famous story for children. Todd is a character of the story. Squirrel Nutkin, Pigling Bland, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle are all works of Beatrix Potter. Just how the camel got his hump, how the monkey lost his rump are works of Rudyard Kipling. Mr. Toad, Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole are the three characters of Wind in the Willows. Beatrix Potter's books were known for the use of animals as characters and colorful illustrations. Oh, books! What books they used to know! Those children living long ago! So please, oh please, we beg, we pray, go throw your TV set away. And in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall. Then fill the shelves with lot of books, ignoring all the dirty looks. The screams and yells, the bites and kicks, and children hitting you with sticks. Here, the poet stresses the importance of inculcating reading as a habit. The poet, by using the words such as please, beg and pray, sincerely appeals to the parents to throw away their TV sets and replace them with bookshelves. Children would throw tantrums in protest, but ignoring the children's protest, parents should fill the shelves with lots of books. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, They'll now begin to feel the need of having something to read. These lines expresses the poet's belief that sooner or later the children would have nothing else to do. They would gradually feel the need to read books. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so keen. They'll wonder what they'd ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you did. Here, we come across some new words. Keen means to be interested. Ridiculous means absurd. Nauseating means disgusting. Foul means dirty or extremely unpleasant. Repulsive means arousing intense distaste or disgust. These lines express the poet's certainty that once children would start reading, it would fill their hearts with joy and the children would start realizing that the books are much more interesting than the television. They themselves would wonder why they had ever liked watching the repulsive television screen. Later, every child would love his parents even more for introducing him to books. The poet has used a number of poetic devices here. Now, first let us see the rhyme scheme. The poem has a rhyme scheme which heightens the effect of narration. The poet has very carefully divided a sentence into different lines so that each line rhymes with the next line. The scheme followed throughout the poem is AA, BB, CC and so on. Repetition is another poetic device used here. Repetition is the purposeful use of words and phrases again and again 
to create a smooth flow and emphasis. Few examples of repetition are is never, never, never. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it, until they are absolutely drunk. They used to read. They'd read and read. An other figure of speech used here is synecdoche. Synecdoche is a figure of speech in which a part is put for the whole or the whole for a part. In this poem, the example of synecdoche is The younger ones had Beatrix Porter. Here, the name of the author Beatrix Porter is used to represent the whole gamut of her works such as The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin, The Tale of Mr. Toad, and the tale of Pigling Bland. Personification Personification is another figure of speech used here. It is the practice of representing a thing or idea as a person in art, literature, etc. Dal uses personification in It kills imagination dead. Here, not only he gives television, the human ability to kill something, but also gives imagination the ability to die at its hand. Hyperbole. Hyperbole is another figure of speech used here. It is a device that uses exaggeration for emphasis or effect. For example, last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. In fact, we know that eyeballs will not fall or lie on the floor. A poet has exaggerated this. Another figure of speech used here is simile. Simile is a comparison that uses the words as or like to compare one thing to another. Here, in the line, his brain becomes as soft as cheese. The poet has compared the brain to cheese. Another figure of speech used here is metaphor. A comparison between two unlike things that actually have something important in common is metaphor. A comparison that says one thing is another. Here, in the lines, how they used, how used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented, the poet calls the television the, a monster. Next figure of speech used is alliteration. Alliteration is the close repetition of initial consonant sounds usually at the beginning of words in a sentence as in the sentence pirates wearing purple pants here the consonant p is repeated thrice so thus we have come to the end of this poem so children i hope you have had a better understanding of the poem. Thank you all for listening. God bless you. Have a nice day.